TVA's Acura Series, Vergara Barrels for guaranteed accuracy, Nitride for guaranteed rust proofing, and a rifle guaranteed to be the best muzzle loader you've ever shot. CVA, it's just a better gun. This segment's been sponsored by our friends over at Soul Shine Pizza. They're at 4021 Hughes Crossing at Suite 101 in Franklin, Tennessee. Or y'all give my buddy Steve Brandon a call, 615-379-7767. They've got lunch specials Monday through Friday. Be sure to get down there and see them. Let them take care of you and tell them thank you for all they do for us here at the show. All right, if y'all want to give us a call, you can do that now at 615-737-7767. And we've been sitting here tonight with Paul and Casey and talking catfishing. And, and tonight, kind of jugging uh, in general is what we've been talking about, and or, or noodling, but we're careful to call it noodling because people think we're like Casey. Yeah. Some people are crazy. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 So they put their hands on the rocks and, and stuff. Rocks. Yeah. Hey, I'm like Paul. I'm I not prefer one of them. a boat and a rod reel. I'll work the camera. You go ahead yeah, and put right. you, I tell you, you go ahead. That's, that's what I tell them, man. But, uh, but nonetheless, you know, you can do this different way. So y'all saw with Mike and, and Ray, they're using live bait, totally different technique. They're using live bait, but also notice they were catching mostly blue catfish, and you guys were catching mostly channel cat. So, I mean, it's the difference in bait is going to have a lot to do with, because you got channel cats, you got uh, your flatheads, and you got blue cats, and they're all three there. I mean, I'm sure you catch all three in a given year. Yeah. You know, in the same areas, but by switching up to that live bait, you're going to catch more blues and, and flatheads right. too right. on that. But, uh, Paul, do you ever sweet? I mean, I know we're in summertime right now, but is there any time of year when you switch up types of bait? I know you go from noodles yeah. to, to rod and rail and so on and so forth. Do you switch up bait back and forth very much throughout the yeah. year? Usually uh, before, it, it when May till around the beginning of July, the first week. Uh, we usually strictly shrimp, mm -hmm. and then we'll switch over to the chicken breast because the blues start uh, hitting uh, more and at like this time. And they right like now, that better anyway. Yeah. So. You they're, know, I they're, noticed they're, on a hickory this year, and I don't know. I'm sure it was talked about, but uh, there was a lot of clams. There was a big clam uh -huh. kit off. And uh, I think that chicken breast resembles a lot of the clams floating around. It could have a lot right. to do with it. I yeah. mean, if this man beside me ever preaches anything, it's matching the hatch. That's right. And that's the same concept. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If there's dead clam floating around in the water and you got a piece of dead chicken floating around, that's about as close as you that's can good. get. You know, yeah. that's, you got a good point with that, Casey. I mean, it's probably exactly what a lot of that is. Um, whatever they're eating on, you mm -hmm. want to be as close as you can get yeah, to that, yeah. no matter what it is. Just like you know, crop your no bass, you want to match the right. hatch. Yeah. Yeah. And we use a lot of skipjack and shad, too, yeah. a lot, you know. And you cut it. You use a lot of cut Yeah, I use bait. a lot of cut bait. It's usually cut skipjack. And, you know, I was told forever that the head catches more fish, you know, than the rest of the body. But you remember we did that catfish show with, mm -hmm. uh, it, they were on the Tennessee River. It was Larry Musen now. He's one of the best in the world at it. And they weren't doing this intentionally, but they were making different cuts that day and actually realized they caught more on the center of the body yeah. than any other piece of the bait. That's okay. going to be the so, gut section. That's mostly. right. So you got, but nonetheless, you know, it's always been told to hell. But Larry mm -hmm. and them discovered that it seemed to be the middle, the at least middle at that part. point in time. Uh, but there's a lot of different ways to catch catfish. There's a lot of, uh, you know, we talked just a little little bit about it, but how the current can really affect them. Yes. Uh, just as with any fish, mm -hmm. but you definitely want some current. And one thing too that I that I like, and Dayton talks about this a lot, when you get those big rain systems come through and your creeks get yep. washed out and everything's yep. muddy and oh it's just awful and fishing's ruined. That's, that's when you catch catch time to go catfish. Yeah. And you know, plus Paul's used to a river system and he fishes reservoirs also. So a lot of your reservoirs don't have the current like old hickory might have during yeah. the day. Right. So there's a big difference. Mm -hmm. Oh, we it love it when there's a barge coming. Yeah, that's it's stirring up a little bit, yeah. stirs it up, and yeah. it seems right after a barge goes by. There they go. Uh, oh, here they come. What turns that bait yeah. up? Yeah, yeah. It turns it up. Yeah, and, and a lot of people call it the barge bite. Yeah, right. And that's bite. Yeah. And well, there's a spot over at Priest that everybody, a lot of people know, and you'll be sitting there fishing, and there'll be ski boats come by and everything, and it makes the fish feed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I yeah. mean, it's, it's just literally washing does. everything up against that bank. Yeah. And when it goes to washing, you know, you wash yeah. your night crawler, whatever, it's up on there into the yeah. water and just crawl down. Yeah, when that rain, the rain event. Same way. Pushes it out of the creeks. Uh, we talk about as another way to look at the same concept. You go to one of your dams, uh, like the Caney Fork or something mm -hmm. like that. What's the best time to be hitting them? Right when they turn the generator off. 
Why is that? All that I'm bait's saying. at the top of the water. Now it's floating around yeah, everywhere. It's, moving. it's just a big buffet of that water. Mm -hmm. And current helps work the same way. Rain events help work the same way. All that food, it's all getting washed into the water. And now it's all floating around everywhere. Yeah. And these catfish are just, yeah. I mean, they're going Rolling. crazy. Yeah. yeah, they're just going crazy eating. And they're not using their eyes near as much no. as a lot of your, you know, like no. a crappie right. or something. You know, he relies on his eyes a lot more. A catfish don't need it. It don't matter how muddy it is. Those no. whistles. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's got whiskers. taste buds all over mm -hmm. his body. Yeah, and yeah he, can, he does. Now, Paul, let's start talking about taste. You typically just fry them like what we normally hear about. You got to get catfish recipes. No, to we share just with. Uh, take them and uh, usually when I catch my fish, we'll clean them uh, right at the end of the day at the boat, and uh, we'll take the fillets and put them on ice. When I get home, I will put them in uh, salt water and put them in the refrigerator. Uh, for at least two hours, and then I will freeze them, you know, with water. Uh, and some people use milk jugs, you know, fill them mm -hmm. up with the flays in because it keeps them, uh, that, the cardboard carton uh, keeps them from being freezer burnt, plus the water bit around them keeps them from getting yeah. freezer burnt. But I will do that, and then uh, just basically peanut oil and some good batter. I will and say this, if you put milk let it sit in milk for yes. just a little bit. It it's will get catfish have just really a little taste to it. Yeah. On it. it like does. to do it overnight like yeah. that. Yes. Yeah. Now, Casey, those big ones that, that you pull out of these rocks <laughs> with, with your crazy butt, <laughs> do, do you do you keep the big fish like that and eat them, or you typically let those back? I'm talking 20 plus pounds. Usually yeah. those big females we let back. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a big fan of taking them off their eggs, you know, in the first place. You just like to wrestle them out. Yeah, I like to wrestle them around the water with them Everybody that goes with Casey says, I want to do this, and they say, what a rush. Right. Yeah. Because when they come out... Well, we'll film. I'm like you, Paul. I'll film it from the back. Let everybody know how it goes. And another reason you put salt in the water when you soak in your fish, it helps pull some of that oil out of the fish. Any of the in there? Any oil? Uh-huh. And you need to do that with every fish. I do it with my sauger, walleye. I do it with any wild game, period. Yeah, any wild game, period. Just draws all that out. It does. Uh, we got a few collars here. Let's, let's grab a couple. Mike, how you doing tonight? We might have lost Mike. Yes. Hey, Mike, how you doing tonight? Good, yourself? You doing well. We appreciate Good. you calling. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, quick question. Um, talking about uh, shrimp as far as catching catfish, but I've heard of um, taking chicken breasts mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and catching catfish. Yes, yes sir. sir. a little cheaper as far as shrimp, so yeah. I didn't know what it definitely is. Yeah, 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 shrimp yeah. versus uh, chicken breast. Yeah, chicken breast. Uh, of course, you can get those in the store. A lot of them are marked down to three or four dollars for three or four yeah, breasts. You can get cheap stuff. Yeah, yeah. Fish don't care you, a lot of yeah. your uh, Tennessee River fishermen, mm -hmm. my, uh, was it David Sims? That's what he uses. And I tell you what, right now is when you want to use yeah. that chicken yeah, and breast. And you may have missed earlier, Mike, but uh, Paul actually spoke directly about chicken breast earlier, and uh, it is one of his preferred baits, yes, especially yes. for blue catfish. Yeah, it's, it's a great bait. And I'll bite. tell you something else that's unbelievable is marshmallows. Marshmallows. <laughs> marshmallows. Really? You, yes, you take the little flavored marshmallows, because they dissolve uh -huh. slowly in the water. They'll stay on that hook and dissolve, and they will eat. Those flavored marshmallows. Oh, there we go. Mar marshmallow okay. sales just went up all over Middle Tennessee. I feel like <laughs> you could catch a catfish on dang near anything. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and I yes, used to, uh, absolutely. I used to actually work at a bait shop oh, in Hendersonville. And in that bait shop, we had a commercial fisherman come in all the time. He actually owned the old bait shop in Hendersonville. And uh, God rest him, he just passed. And uh, he, he used to tell me he'd catch them off of uh, Dove soap. Uh, mm -hmm. He would use cheese, a yeah, block cheese, of cheese, cheese and he would good. put these big crates out, really? you know, and that's how he mm -hmm. supplied, you yeah. know. And if it stinks or way. taste or smell, you know, whatever, yeah. the catfish will eat it. Mm -hmm. yeah. 100%. Yeah. Okay. It is. Yeah. But yeah, absolutely. Use that chicken breast. Paul Paul loves it. And he still mm -hmm. puts the Kool Aid in there, mix it with Kool Aid. Yeah, get it blood yeah. red. Yeah. That's what we were talking about a while ago, right? Yep. Yep. It definitely does. Well, brother, help, get out there and get you some. Okay. Well, thank yeah. you. Good luck to you. We good appreciate luck. you calling tonight. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Uh-huh.
Yeah, yeah you know, they use that chicken breast to catch them alligators, too. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, down there. It's, it's, yeah. Well, they, yeah, they, 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 they let them lay they out for three have, weeks, and they've got everything. <laughs> yeah. 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 they got the like like buzzer cute. Noodle. They want uh -huh. to know if they can make a noodle big enough to handle them alligators. <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't know unless you put three or four of them together. Because, you know, right. man, shoot, they'd have to have a heck of a noodle to be able to do that. because they're going to sink up. They shoot them. Right. But I'm like, I've seen, I don't know if hey, they, they shoot them. they might come up with something like that. They they when they shoot them with a bow, don't they got to drag a jug with them, I thought? I believe so. Oh, I don't know much about it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I think that's how they keep it's up It's actually a lot more regulated than people would think right. the alligators are. It's, it's very regulated anyway. Um, but, you know, to come up with a noodle or something like that, it would have to be very heavy duty, but I, you know, yeah. right. them guys, they could probably come up with it. Well, they've been trying uh, to work on I it. I mean, granted, a big catfish and a 10 foot alligator is two different things. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, those catfish, yeah, they could be pretty good. Rock shaker and a tree yeah. shaker, yeah. two yeah. different yeah. things. Yeah. Right. You know why them alligators are so ornery, right? You know? <laughs> but, That's right. but, yeah, truth is, they, I guess they could always give it a shot. You never know. But they use that stuff. Casey just about looked like one of them alligator guys up there on the front fighting that big catfish. Yeah. Up. It's kind of funny. Hey, Did you see how action. his hair was blowing in the yeah. wind? Mine don't do that. No, <laughs> you don't, don't have that problem. I don't have that problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, we're going to get ready to take a quick break. We'll be right back with some more Southern Wizard Waters.